Welcome to 3.3 Stretching and Compression of Graphs of Functions. Uh, starting off, we're going to take a look at something that you took last year already, is the parabolas, the quadratic equations, y equals x squared. Uh, if we put an a value out front, uh, if you recall, it, ca it causes it either to be opening upwards or opening downwards, and it changes how narrow or wide it is. If we put a, a 0 0.5 in there, uh, it's positive, so it's going to be opening upwards. Instead of y is equal to x squared, now we're talking about y is equal to 0 0.5 x squared. So let's say if we put in a value of 4 for x, 4 squared is 16 times a half, <coughs> pardon me, would be 8. So 4, oh, I guess that wouldn't be a good example. Let's use 2. So let's say if we put in a 2, 0 0.5 times 2 squared. 2 squared is 4, a half of that is 2. So if we put an x of 2, we get a 2 for our y value. So uh, we end up making it look more like this, don't we? So when y, when the a value is less than 1, it ends up getting wider. When a value is larger than 1, it gets narrower. So for <clears throat> this would be my 0 0.5. If I switch to green, then my half might be... You know, it looks more pointy here, but kind of be more narrow like that. So this would be uh, y is equal to 2x squared. So a stands for whatever coefficient is in front of that x squared. Now my negative 0 0.5, ah, we'll switch to red in this case. So this would be y is equal to negative 0 0.5x squared. It would still have that same uh, thin shape, but now it would be opening downwards, wouldn't it? And my last one I'm going to have to erase here to scroll downwards. My minus 2 would be a lot like plus 2, but it would be opening downwards. So we see a, we see that pattern from last year. Well, what if we do the same thing, but instead of applying it to our y is equal to x squared, we apply it to y is equal to the square root of x. This is another one of our basic functions that we've uh, been playing around with. So, so just as recall, y is equal to the square root of x the, as a parent function. Uh, well, I'll make all the four quadrants, but I really only need the first one. It kind of has that shape to it, doesn't it? So if we put in an A value now, we're going to get the, the same results. And let's just investigate. I'll go over to, uh, to Desmos over here, and let's make this <clears throat> uh, be a square root of X. I'll put square root of X. There's our basic shape, and you'll see what I did here is I made uh, a slider with a f of x. So it takes my original square root of x, it puts an a out front, and there's a nice little slider. So first of all, what happens if I uh, make it a negative one? So I'll slide over to negative one. Yeah, the same result, isn't it? Just like that parabola uh, got reflected over the x-axis, same thing here. This square root of x now got reflected over the x-axis. Uh, what happens if I make it something larger than 1? And then now you see it gets stretched vertically, right? So if you imagine uh, <clears throat> there were the whole graphing page was made out of rubber, and you put your hand up here on the top, and you put your other hand here down at the bottom, and you pulled and stretched it vertically, the shape of this one would look more like the blue one. Blue one. So that's why we call it a vertical stretch. If I bring the value of A between 0 and 1, you see what we call that getting compressed vertically. And if it's between 0 and negative 1, it's still compressed, right? It still uh, doesn't have as large of an amplitude. It doesn't go as far downwards after the reflection. So when I put a value between 0 and negative 1, two things happen. One is it gets reflected because of the negative, and the other part is it gets compressed because it's between 0 and 1. Uh, once I get to negative 1, it's a perfect reflection, and when I get larger than negative 1, now you can see it getting vertically stretched. Okay, So there it's being reflected and vertically stretched. So uh, the cool thing is that this is true uh, not just for y is equal to x squared and not just y is equal to the square root of x. It's true for all of our functions. Oh, here we go. And we've got the same thing that I was just showing you. You can take a look at those pages. Um, so here's another example with uh, y is equal to x cubed. Heck, let's go over here and do this with y equals x cubed. So if I do that, x cubed, and I've got my same slider. So if I start it off at, at 1 there, now it's... My new one is right over top of the old one, so you can't really see. So what if I put it to negative 1? Uh, there you get that reflection, okay? So blue is 
Oh, how come I have three? Oh yeah. Okay, so the uh, which is which? The orange one is my orange one's my original, and then the blue one is the reflected. So um, it gets reflected across the x-axis. Now what happens if we put it back to one? but make it larger. So you can see the effect of that vertical stretch now as A is larger than positive 1. Uh, if I put it between 0 and 1, it gets vertically compressed. And now between 0 and negative 1, it's two things are happening. The negative sign is causing it to get reflected, and the fact that it's between 0 and 1 ca is causing the compression. So and then if I stretch it out even more, now you see the effect of that reflection and the vertical stretch. So um, that's the behavior of the... In fact, I can put any kind of a 1 in there. I don't know. Let's put... So 3x cubed minus 2x squared uh, plus 1. All right, so um, there's our really crazy looking original function. And now if I say <clears throat> that a is equal to one, it's my original. So if I make it negative one, again, you see that, I'll try to get it. There you see the reflection across the x-axis. If I go larger than one, can you see how that's getting stretched? Uh, again, I like the analogy, if you imagine that the graph paper is made out of rubber and you're grabbing it on the top, put one hand up here, one down there, and you stretch it, everything gets stretched away from the x-axis. So this point got stretched over here. Okay, uh, The point that was here got stretched way up to over there. Okay, So you see the stretching happening. And same thing as we go negative and stretch, or if we do a compression. Here's an example of a compression because my a value is less than 1. So I think we're about ready to make a bit of a rule here. And uh, I think it's another example, maybe the textbook. It makes it look a little bit more difficult than it has to. Uh, let's do some notes on the side here. There we go. So if we're comparing, if our, if our original function is, oh, let's get this a little bit nicer. Less, less kindergarten -y. If our original function is y is equal to f of x, and if our image now is y is equal to a f of x, okay, if we have a, um, the original, uh, if you pick any point x comma y, that will correspond to uh, the same x value, nothing happens to the x, but now the the y value gets multiplied by a. So, if for example, if the original function, if one comma two was one of the points, right, and let's say that uh, this a value was equal to negative three, then over here we would get one comma negative six. So this this point would you'd notice the two things happening. You'd get the reflection because of the negative, and also the um, stretch because it's larger than one. So let's put that part in there. So if uh, if a is negative, so if a is less than zero, okay, then you get uh, a reflection. Which what kind of reflection do you get? Well, it's the y values that are being multiplied, right? So the, if the y values are being multiplied, then it's across the x-axis. Uh, if now I want to put this in terms of absolute because if the a value is between zero and one or between zero and negative one, so I'm going to say if the absolute value of a. So I'm not worried about if a is positive or negative. I'm just wondering if it's between 0 and 1 or 0 and negative 1. So if the absolute value of a is less than 1, uh, then it's going to be uh, vertical compression. And last, you can probably guess this, if the absolute value of a is greater than one, then it'll be not a compression but a stretch. 
So the words compression and stretch, they're pretty common among uh, math textbooks or teachers, but really it's just something in English which is describing this math, that the x values are staying the same, but the y values are being mul er, correspond to a y. So the y values are getting multiplied by whatever that a is. Um, let's take a look at their next example here. Yeah, example number one. Here is a graph y is equal to g of x, so we don't have a mathematical equation for it, but it looks a bit like a parabola with some kind of absolute value thing happening on there. So now they say sketch the value of y is equal to negative 3 uh, g of x. So in other words, all the x values are going to stay the same. So in our original function, if we have uh, um, a pair of numbers x and y, now they'll correspond to the same x, but now it'll be a y, so it'll be negative three times y. So um, they pick a bunch of points, and so here's the first point that they pick negative two comma negative three. Uh, so that would be an example there, negative two comma negative three. And notice that the x value stays the same, but the y value gets multiplied by negative three. They do a, a, a whole table, and then afterwards they connect the dots and get the shape. So if the original uh, shape, I'll make it so I can write again. If the original shape went like this, then our new shape, I'll try to outline it just so you see which one it is, our, our new shape looks like that. And you, see, you can see what happened. Because the a value was negative, that's why it's reflected. Because this number is greater than 1, that's why it was stretched and not compressed. All right. Um, I will let you try this uh, check your understanding. And I'm going to hit pause, and then we'll see you uh, after the break, as they say.